Hello everybody, how we lit bit has already been. This is John Duty on Green Card 101. Na leo, sema leo ni siku ya kiyama because I am going to give you the tricks, the tips and all the information that you need to know about the Green Card interview at the embassy once you've been invited. Sasa, wewe sema stress yako kwisha because John Duty got you. This is yet another episode of uh, episode on Green Card 101 and I'm going to give you all you've been asking for. With me here today, I have the uh, DS-260 from the US Department of State. For your information, this document is sensitive but not classified. That's its category. It's sensitive but unclassified. Therefore, this means that this document has sensitive information, my sensitive information, but is not classified. Therefore, I'm going to give you details about the DS-260. I'm not going to mention about my personal documents, I mean information, but DS-260 is the same for everyone. Usiwai tens mtuangu. And once you've been selected, you will get a chance to fill out this document. Uh, uh, from the U.S. Department of State. Without further ado, Manzeo Achani and direct to the point, Nuambia Mimi, I do not speak for the U.S. Department of State. I am not an immigration officer or lawyer. I do not speak for the Homeland Security. Mimi, I'm just sharing my experiences. And that disclaimer is to say that do not hold me hostage with my sentiments and uh, do not reflect <laughs> the wishes of the persons organizing or doing the interviews for the green card and all that immigration stuff. Your disclaimer me kwa mrefu mtu wangu lakini ebidi ni same mtu wangu Mr. Kinendejela. But sasa without further ado uh, what you need to do is to be very careful as you provide your information because most of the time, ni kama, wacha ni kuwape example, most of the time ni kama terms and conditions apply. Umuana yo documents, hazingine uko kwa simu, amu kwa internet, unajaribu kusign, I mean kulogi ni to something, ama kuapply for something, alafu na leto ile pop-up ya terms and conditions apply. Ama, ama, sometimes, unasema tu, ama sometimes unampia go sign something, usign kitu ndio kitu ifanyike. Alafu kuna paperwork mingi, unambu usign. Sometimes we just say yes. Terms and conditions uh, conditions apply except to nasema two yes without even reading the verbatim, reading all that information. Na sasa zingine unambia kwa sign here ndo kitu ifanyike ama sign here and your process you go through. Na sign tu watu ujasomezo vitu zote. Maramingu we get away with that. But for the DS-260, this is your future. This determines your future in the US of A in a different world that, than you've ever known. Tafadhali, tafadhali. Reading is fundamental. Soma vizuri. Read carefully and follow the instructions to the latter. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. The only thing, reason that you will be disqualified for an interview or not get your green card, most of the time is just not following the instructions. There's no in between. You, there's no special people. There are no special situations. Just follow the instructions and you'll be fine. The DS-260 basically... Uh, comes with your case number on top and your confirmation number. Confirmation number, that's for them to decide and for them to use. It does not auto it to me, but your case number is very, very vital. So for me here, I have my case number. And then on the first page, as you can see, um, uh, there's the personal address and phone information. That's the past, first part. So people who've been asking me, Joe, what are the questions that I should expect uh, during my uh, green card interview at the embassy. He, maswali zote ziko kwa hii document. Indo mwa Kenya yako hii. There is nothing in between and this is common to everyone. You will only be asked questions based on how you answered this document. Personal address and information. Name. Jine yako wezi shindo. Just your name. Um, and then there is the second uh, part where it, it says full name in native language. Uh, if there's a way you're called in your native language. And then there are, there's a drop-down arrow. If it does not apply, just say it does not apply. And then we told you about if you have uh, other names. If you say no, you're good to go. If you have other names, please, please, tafadhali, just provide documentation to show that you have other names. Never. The, one of the things that I've noted is, 
in this whole uh, uh, mini process of this application for green card or immigrating to the US of A, if you say yes, please be prepared to show proof. Be prepared to show evidence. If you uh, these are about marital status, if you're married, exactly, tell us, show us by word of uh, by a piece of paper that shows you are legally legally married, your date of birth, your city of birth. All these are questions that uh, you can look forward to be asked. But trust me, sometimes depending on who is interviewing you, kuna vitu ndogo ndogo hata kuuliza. Well, well, continue moving on swiftly. Country of birth, common sense. Uh, your document uh, type that you want to provide for this interview. Most of the time is your passport. Nasikia squeezy, the passport is not required. When I, was, when, I, when I applied, the passport was mandatory to have a passport. Squeezy kama passport si mandatory, then your document type ni nini? Ni ID yako, your national ID. And then now, hapo chini kuna document ID, which is the document number. Kama ni ID, uneka ID number yako. Kama ni, uh, kama ni, uh, ni passport, uneka passport number. Then you say where the uh, the document was issued, of course, your country. Ata kama uko maju, ama uko katar, ama uko country gani, just say you st the document was issued in now, where it was issued if it's your own now motherland, Kenya, whatever. Usisami la country enye, unaishi your time. So if uko UAE, don't say the document was issued in UAE if it was issued in Nairobi, for instance. Okay, 2010 at 10, present address. So most of the time, easy Western countries in Akwagana, they have their own addresses. Like when I skia 5070 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C. In Africa, we don't have those addresses. So I would advise just to use your P.O. box or your family's P.O. box. Something that they can, you know, use to see where you've lived or something. Because hii P.O. Box hakuna mali watu hii tumia. Watu watu hii kuuliza kitu yote. Na hakuna kitu hii tumu kwa P.O. Box yako. Everything will be coming to your email. But just provide your present address. Uh, kama mi yo time ni kiapply ni likuwa na ishi mlolongo. Uh, temporarily ni likuwa na waka hapo Green Park at the river. So mini liyaka 200100 mlolongo street. Hakuna address kama hiyo Kenya. But at least nimesema na ishi mlolongo. Kwa si mlolongo hazina numbers kama maju. But your time likuwa nishi mlolongo. And then ulizo kama umeishi place ingine before. Nimeishi Kayole. Kayole, Kayole hakuna address in itwa sujui 1960 Kayole Avenue. Hapana, mita sima tu 00111 Kayole Spine Road. Kitu kama hiyo. So utaulizo zile address zote umeishi in the past 10 years. Izo address zote utastate hapa na pia watakuuliza uh, pale kwa interview. Ndo wane kama kuna discrepancies. Ndo wa hizi ndi wa ishigi. Wa hizi ndi wana kwa gana discrepancies na kwa nyo wana ishigi. So natatu kujua wane msa inagani. Na kama, na most importantly, make sure umeka ili address enyu umeka for more than five years. Uh, that is very important because it shows, uh, it shows that you, you are stable in your lifestyle. Wakitu kama hiyo, hata ukumajuu kikuja, hata wanaangaliaga sana address umeishi more for more than two years. And then you take a contact information yako, hapo manamba za simu, email address yako. Now, here's the most interesting part. Kuna malu atakuleza um, permanent address. Um, a name of person, person currently living at address. Na wanataka uprovide a US address. Sasa hapa ndi unekaga address ya host wako kama umepata. Lakini kama ujapata pia usitens because hapo kwa permanent address wanataka uweke address ya maju just in case they uh, they want to send you something kisha fika. But hii, hii kitu is kushitue because hatu kisha feel hii ukona chance ya kuedit badai after you've been selected. Na ukona pia chance ingine ya kuedit ukiingia maju. Pale uki homeland security ukiingia maju they will ask you of where you're going so that they can send you a green card over there. So basically... Uh, your time when me was applying, I mean, I was filling my DS260, I did not have a host. So what I did, I just clicked, there's a drop down arrow up, because my address mingi. <laughs> Mimi, your time, I was naive just like you are. I thought when you, you win a green card, they will pay you a ticket, they will give you a place to live, they will find you a job. So me, I thought your drop down arrow, they're asking me of where I want to live. So me, Niliaka, something like... Seattle, uh, Washington. Nanika, because I just guessed Nanika choose to. Because I thought ile address me nitaeka wata nipeleka uko. But that's not the case. They want you to provide uh, your your host her address. So, uh, but don't worry. If you just choose any address hapa, you'll have a, a chance to edit later on. What else? Um, and then the, now there's the family information. Family information, utaeka wa majina za baba yako, mama yako, your parents, um, 
uh, your parents date of birth uh, your kids your your wife if you have any and remember if you say you have kids please have their birth certificate and your name should be in that birth certificate as well eh? alafu utoliza kama mwingi ama juu this uh, uh, i think this is a trick question have you ever been in the us most people think that if you've been to the us before it's an advantage for you no actually this is a trick question there and uh, there are some people who can say yes at ndio wapita interview the worst thing that you can do in any process that involves let me speak about the us that involves the us is lie because once you've ruined that trust it cannot be it cannot be uh, it's hard to to mend that bridge you know once you've burned that bridge and it nar narrows down to the to come a credit card once you get to the us you'll be given uh, a lot of money will be at your disposal you'll be given loans to advance your life so once you mess up that trust even with finances ukose kulipa madeni au lipi credit cards you ruin your social you ruin your points then you cannot be trusted anymore so trust is key and uh, honesty is key just have integrity as you answer this document if something is confusing please usijichanganye hapo tena kwa hiyo ds260 they will ask you about your educational background all the way from the most recent one so kama ulienda kampo unaanzia hapo kama uko nda kampo anzia high school all the way to primary school and all those um all those schools you attended kama kuli graduate on anything have the certificates ready uh, if hauna ready mimi ki apply siko na form 4 certificate so i had to go to my former school and get my form 4 uh, certificate so make sure you present all those certificates as well uh, nini nyingine kwa hiyo tukiondokea hivyo uh, after your educational background they'll ask you if you ever served in the military say that yes or no answer uh, for me i'd never served in the military so unasema tu yes or no if you've been in the military me naona kama it's a good thing kama umekuwa military uh, na kama umekuwa military maybe they'll just want uh, uh, documentation kuonesha if you've been discharged um, correctly au kuingia kwa ngori ama kufanya kitu mbaya while in the military love to lizo have ever belonged to contributed to or worked for any professional social or charitable organization hapa tu in short wanakuuliza kama kuna malimo papa malimo ifanya kazi which is in either of these categories so mimi nilisema yes nikasema alafu kuna number of organizations on that state mimi nikasema nilifanya kazi uh, superior homes kenya which in your estate ya manyumba nilikuwa nuzo hapo green park athi river and then nimoi fanya kama customer representatives of safaricom nimoi fanya standard media group kama editor uh, na pia nikiwa desta university nilikuwa a student leader na nilikuwa na work uh, kama editor in chief wa the school magazine uh, involvement newspaper so mimi nikalist hizo vitu zote umefanya hapo honestly about hizi vitu zote za majob wajali uh, uh, hawata kuuliza for proof hawata kuuliza ati recommendation letter hawata kuuliza kitu cha job ni kusema tu ndio kama wako na swali watakuuliza kama ni kitu sensitive kwao alafu watakuuliza kama you have any specialized skills or training including firearms explosives nuclear biological or chemical experience mimi tena mimi na ujinga yangu hii swali mimi ningesema no kwa hizi vitu isn't it a bit technical kidogo mimi nilisema yes alafu nikaulizo which one <laughs> ukisema yes utaambua explain skills or training mimi nikasema oh communication skills and training at Dester University which is true i have communication skills that i've been trained for for four years but then ile kwa kwa category so they they didn't bother a lot about this they want to know if you have specialized skills uh, specialized skills or training including firearms explosives nuclear biological or chemical so ukisema yes na useme skills za job yako bado uko fe, uko safe au kuniuliza verbally kwa interview ni explain so hizi vitu zote na mention it does not mean kwa interview utakuwa somewa kama mtoto watu unaulizwa does not mean that they will be reading uh, word to word and asking you they'll just be going through the list and asking you the most critical things like um your when did you graduate high school na vitu kama hizo tu and then they will ask you if you've ever been a member of or been involved in any paramilitary unit vigilante unit rebel uh, rebel uh, group guerrilla group or insurgent organization wale wasi wanachoma watu uko south sudan or congo all those uh, paramil uh, paramilitary units you have to come 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 you know come come honest come through and say yes or no if you say yes of course you have there's a drop down arrow you have to explain and give details if you say no you're good to go 
do you speak any other any other languages apart from your native language for me i said yes i speak swahili and i speak english and the interview location kama if you're still in kenya uh, say kenya if you're in tanzania say tanzania if you're in uganda say your country uh, the location where you want to be interviewed now if you are in abroad uh, somewhere in qatar uh, middle east asia anywhere that is not in africa if in Africa, just say your Africa, your African country, because I'm sure there's a U.S. embassy. Unless it's a, it's a war-torn country, I'm sure there's a U.S. embassy in that country. If you're abroad in Qatar, all these places in Asia, I'm sure there's a U.S. embassy somewhere there. And if there's no U.S. embassy in the country that you are in, uh, make arrangements to go home or, or go to the closest U.S. embassy. So you'll just have to indicate the closest U.S. embassy for your interview location. Now, this, is, this final part, um, we're on page 5, and uh, the document is up to page 6. This part is very, very sensitive, and it's a yes or no uh, part because it's about your security and background information. So I'll just skim through very fast to tell you of you to come out. Do you have any communicable diseases of public health, significant such as TB? Very big deal. TB, they really, really are keen on that. And uh, once you go for your medical checkup at IOM, they will look at that. Um, do you have any documentations to establish that you've been that you have received vac vac vaccinations in accordance in accordance with U.S. law? So vaccines when i was feeling the ds260 i did not have any vaccines me vaccines the last that i had at that point was when i was a kid which i don't even have all those documents so i said no um, but by the time you get to the interview you've already gone to your medical checkup you've gotten all those vaccines alternatively if you do not want to wait until your medical checkup once you filled this um uh, the vaccines are valid for six months so make sure by the time you go to the interview or maybe you're just close for to go to the medical checkup go to a hospital that you trust a valid hospital get all your vaccines and show them the documentation no pressure with this if you don't have any vaccines you'll still get them at iom no pressure have you ever been arrested or convicted for any offense or crime even though subject of uh, of a pardon amnesty or other similar action you have to do this. And if you say no and you've been arrested, they can pull this information from DCI. Remember, you'll also bring your uh, good conduct certificate from DCI. So please don't lie. Uh, if you've not been arrested or uh, convicted, just say no. Okay, are you are you, or have you ever been a drug abuser or addict? What you are... Um, this is about wajakoya, mangwai, uh, maheroin, macocaine, hard drugs. If you are you've, you've, you are a drug addict, this is a sensitive one. It's almost a red light. You are you are definitely in trouble. So, and if you say no and you are, they will look. They will definitely draw blood at IOM and uh, look at your blood to see if there are any any hard drugs in there. Um, of course, uh, the interview, the interviewer will want to know if you've ever engaged in prostitution or unlawful commercial, com commercialized vice, or have you been engaged in prostitution or procuring prostitutes within the past 10 years? Yeah. I know how to answer and all these things. I might, I might, uh, I must advise you that most of this information uh, I'm sure the Department of State can find out about you. So you just it's just about what we talked about. Honesty, integrity. Just be able to say the truth and the truth will set you free. Are you a member of any terrorist organization? Do you intend to provide financial assistance or any other support to terrorists or terrorist organizations? Yeah. Uh, have you ever ordered, incited, committed, assisted, or otherwise participated in genocide. What you are uko kwenye kulukua genocide. Have you committed, ordered, incited, assisted, or otherwise participated in torture? Is the maswali zotu utaziona kwa DS260 yako? You will see all these questions in your DS260. If everything is no, just say no all the way. Are you a member of any affiliated communist or totalitarian party? Are you a spouse, minor child, agent of individual who's through 
who has through abuse of governmental or political position converted for personal gain, confiscated, confiscated or expropriated property in a foreign nation. Bro, so basically this is about your background check and your security. How, how can you as an individual be trusted uh, uh, to be given this permanent residence in the U.S. if you've basically in, been involved in vices or crimes or things that are unconstitutional? Um, have you disclosed, trafficked? in confidential U.S. business information obtained in connection with the U.S. participation in chemical weapons conversion. You know, uh, these are deep stuff. Are you permanently ineligible for U.S. citizenship? Have you ever uh, departed the U.S. in order to evade military service during a, a time of war? <laughs> yeah, so let me expound on this point. Uh, if you are uh, you, if you are born or uh, you live in the U.S. before the age of 18, you are required by law um, to uh, participate or sign up for military service. It's not a must for you to go, but just signing up so that when something uh, something goes south, you are able to um, you are able to participate in war. So some people do not want that. If if things go south, some people want to evade the responsibility, their responsibility to participate in a war, so they run away. So this is the, mostly if you, you've only been in Kenya and you've never, you know, uh, participated or, or or you know decided not to volunteer for the military when that option was there. This does not concern you because I know in my country, for instance, it's not a requirement. It's a requirement in the West, in the in the U.S. Do you practice polygamy? What <laughs> wamabibikumi? This is this is one of the questions. This is not allowed in the U.S. Polygamy is not part of the culture in the U.S. It's one wife. If you're tired with that one wife, divorce that wife, marry another one. But you cannot have two at the same time. This, uh, the African culture does not apply to the U.S. So you definitely um, have to practice one monogamy. Has the Secretary of Homeland Security of the United States ever determined that you knowingly made a frivolous application for asylum? You know, if you've lied before trying to get asylum in the U.S. And as I said, some of these things, I just want to see if something of this sort happened and you say no, they can find out. Um, most of the time they can. Okay. Are you likely to become a public charge after you are, you are admitted to the United States? So let me explain a little bit about being a public charge. A public charge are people who come to the U.S., they don't want to work or they are unable to work and then they now start depending on the government. So the challenge becomes that you just moved to a new country, you've not even um, worked, you don't want to work but you want to rely on the government for assistance. I look at the green, green card opportunity as a business opportunity. It's a business exchange honestly between you and the U.S. government. How? How does the U.S. benefit from you? Because you might be thinking that moving to the U.S. is just for your own benefit, right? But even the U.S. will benefit from your labor. You come into this country and starting working, you'll be paying taxes and you'll be improving the economy of the country. So as much as you think it's an opportunity for you, it's also it's also an opportunity for the U.S. government or the U of the or the U.S. as a country. So they want you to come and they want you to work. But if you decide not, you become a public charge. You, you become not someone who relies on the government for support. How attack you were to come how? That's not a worthy candidate for them. Um, have you trafficked uh, minors? Minor trafficking is a big deal. Have you voted in the U.S. states in violation of any law or regulation? That does not matter. Become, if you've never left Africa, you, that does not even apply to you. Just say no. Have you ever renounced U.S. citizenship for the purpose of avoiding taxation? Uh, that if you've never left Africa, that does not uh, apply to you. Mm. Have you ever attended a public elementary school or public secondary school on a student status after November 1996 without reimbursing the school? You know, there are people who maybe came to the U.S. a long time ago. They attended all these public schools 
on student visas and they never paid their dues. Um, do you seek to enter the U.S. for purposes of performing skilled or unskilled labor but have not yet been certified by Secretary of Labor? You know, uh, there are people again who enter the, the country and decided to work in ile unayambiago chiniyamaji under the table. If all those who are working chiniyamaji, they have not they have not been certified um, by the Secretary of State to work. In short, they've not been given permission to work. So basically, that's what it asks. This interview will be very very simple for you uh, because anything that you've uh, you've answered here they already have the documents to show if you said yes if you said no they already have backup information that you provided evidence uh, do you then they will ask you if you want a social security number please say yes please say yes you want a social security number without a social security number um, you can never move an inch or make uh, significant progress in the US um, then they'll ask you if you are authorized your DS 260 to be used by Homeland Security um, as re if required definitely this document all the information will be with Homeland Security when you enter the country so they will view this so yes say yes how else can they verify you lastly but not least they will ask you if someone assisted you in someone assisted you in preparing or applying for green card or filling this document if someone assisted you don't be embarrassed just say yes someone assisted you and explain if someone did not just say no it's not a crime to be assisted i know not everyone maybe would understand the context if someone assisted you just say yes and then explain there is no crime in that otherwise i wish you all the best all what what i can advise there's so much verbatim there me, me in all that security background and background check i said no to everything and then um or especially because most things do not apply to me if something applies to me i say yes if i can back it up i back it up uh all i can advise is be honest be transparent even if something is bad just be honest about it that has been all the information that you might need maybe not all of it but the most important things don't be afraid there's nothing out of the ordinary you will have all the answers before you get there in your ds260 i cannot repeat that more than enough but something that is not in that document is your confidence your confidence is very key something else that is not in that document is your faith and your prayers those are very very key something else that is not in that document is your first impression your perception uh, i mean um first first perception how you present yourself how you speak how you carry yourself and how organized you are you want all your documents to be in order you want to be speaking from the heart from your chest you want to be confident in what you're saying and do not mince your words and do not lie that's all you need to kill this interview and i promise you we will be talking when you are in mayolo adios manze shukran manana all the best